Assalamu alaikum, my name is Salim Siddiqui and you're listening or watching the hotconflict.com video series on Eid, the great celebration of the Muslims and we're going through a little bit of the stories and histories on talking about the truth of what's going on in the world around us. Uh, if you haven't been watching some of the earlier uh, programs, you should probably go back and listen to the story from the beginning so that you can understand what's going on. But right now we're talking about Moses. The time of Moses, and Moses has just freed his people from the lands of the pharaohs. And now his people are searching for their own promised land, somewhere for them to go and establish their own community. But the world is a scary, messed up place, like we've said. Uh, there are people who don't believe in God. There are people who are pagans. There are people who are committing all kinds of sorcery. There is possible descriptions of uh, some of the alien races and the jinns interbreeding with humans. There are stories of all kinds of things. And Moses is leading his people, and he wants to now know what to do because the mission that God sent him to do he did it. He, he saved his people and they escaped from, from Pharaoh. And so he goes up into the mountains and fasts for 30 days. And it's an important point of the plot because it relates to the story later on, on how everything is supposed to be connected. And at this time, his people are down in the valley waiting for him. And after fasting for 30 days, they're getting very impatient with Moses. Uh, <laughs> I, I have to say, we talk about this series and we talk about what are the articles of faith. And again, I said, as a Muslim talking about the people of, of, of Moses and the Jews, I don't consider them my enemy. I consider them my brothers. These are the people who believed in the Lord Most High at that time. How could they be anything other than the great people? But... Just as all people have issues and problems, they had some issues and problems. Now, as a Muslim, speaking totally rationally, we have issues and problems, myself personally, or our whole Muslim community. That's never going to be <laughs> not true. All communities have their own issues and problems. But Moses had some really tough times with his people. I mean, they were hard on the brother. I mean, Moses, peace and blessings of the Lord be upon him. His, his people were, were, were really, hot, really rough on him. So he's up there fasting because he wants to go meet Allah. And so to purify himself, he fasts for 30 days. And if you've fasted, you know that when you fast, your breath starts to change, right? And so when Moses was getting ready to go speak to Allah, again, we've been talking about some of the blessings and amazing things in this story, that Moses actually speaks to Allah. He feels shy that his breath is somewhat not smelling good. So he sees some leaves or some mint leaves or some plant leaves and he chews on them. And he goes to talk to Allah. And when Allah, the light, comes to, comes to, he hears from Allah, Allah asks him why does he have this smell of this plant on his breath? And according to one of the parts of the story that we have is that Allah tells him, Allah, meaning the God, the Lord Most High, tells him that the smell of the, the breath, that the body that Adam is made of, when it fasts for the sake of Allah, there is a smell that comes from this body. Strange thing, the way Allah made us, that Allah likes the smell. <laughs> Can you believe that? It's like you, a fasting true believer, is like perfume for Allah. If you understand the beauty of that, just that little detail of itself, then you might have got a part of the light. So God tells Moses, go back and fast for another 10 days. <laughs> Moses learns a lesson. He goes back and fasts for another 10 days. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> meanwhile, back at the ranch, right? The people... <laughs> Uh, with following Moses, the, 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 the freed children of Israel, they're, uh, they're getting to the point where they've lost it now. I mean, God knows whether some of the other uh, 
jinns have come to them or convinced them or confused them or even hypocrites within their own community or for whatever the situation Moses takes an extra 10 days and things are getting really really messed up back down at the bottom of the mountain but let's stay with Moses because this is so beautiful Moses goes back to talk to Allah Again, just that idea. Moses gets to speak to Allah, Kalam Allah. Allah, the Lord, the Most High, writes the word. Allah writes the word. Allah writes the word into the into the rock. <laughs> Allah writes the words into the rocks of of the earth that he made. By the power of Allah, Allah carves into the rock his own words. And what are the words? What were the words? We always forget the same message that Muslims have been trying to tell you from the very beginning. Commandment number one, I am your Lord thy God. Thou shalt not worship any other God besides me. La ilaha illallah. Thou shalt not make any graven images. Stop with the symbols, the statues, the pyramids, the triangle, the working with the stars, the figuring out the alien technology. You are being given the truth from your Lord. You have been given the truth from your Lord. You are the children of Adam, made by God, breathed life into him, made with a soul from the light. Moses brings back the commandments, of course, and all the other commandments, but the most important being what? La ilaha illallah. There's only one God. By the time Moses gets back, the people are worshipping the golden calf. <laughs> I mean, 40 days, <laughs> 40 days, they're worshipping a golden calf. So, I mean, there's always been trouble, and obviously you can go through the long, detailed story of Moses and the trouble that he had with his people and what happened next, but... You have to ask yourself an interesting question. What happened to the secret knowledge? Well, we said, oh, all the Egyptian societies had this ancient technology and different powers. But the children of Israel were just given something amazing. Imagine the strength and the power and the ability of having a piece of tablet that has been carved with the word of God by God. <laughs> Allah, Allah, can you imagine that? That in and of itself is dynamic. And so where is that arc? Some suggest with the Germans, uh, we all see the pop culture references and silly stories like Indiana Jones, but there's little indications there. And the fact that Germans have been trying to always deal with the occult and the supernatural and uh, there's a reason with that and obviously we'll leave that part of the story you know that's a whole another tangent and that gets into World War II and other serious problems but the Ark of the Covenant and the actual Word of God where is it an interesting question Moses performs other miracles for his people they wander the desert not to be able to go to their promised land because they uh, so quickly forgot the most important lesson. La ilaha illallah, there's only one God. No more images, no more beasts or signs or symbols or triangles or anything like that. Your God is one. And just like Moses asked in the mountains one time when he said, uh, Allah, 
<laughs> this is one of the things about Moses. As bad as a time as he had with his people, <laughs> you feel so sorry for him sometimes when you tell his story. It's that he had such an amazingly close relationship to Allah that it's just so cool to listen to. He's asking Allah, and he asks him one time whether he can see him, right? Because he's like, uh, "You're talking to me, but I, I, I want to, I want to just see you, you know? <laughs> I, I want to see. I mean, since I'm here and you're talking and I'm here, can I, can I like get to look?" <laughs> and Allah tells him, "No, you can't get to see the light." He won't be able to, he doesn't even, he, he doesn't even understand Moses. Allah have mercy on him, and bless me, he doesn't understand, right? Because he's here and he's in a body. He doesn't even understand that Allah's telling him, it's not even possible, man. <laughs> My prophet, it's not even possible. And, and Moses is like, he's still not understanding it. Oh, of course. Hey, if I'm getting to talk to Allah and He's answering my questions, I'm going to keep asking. I mean, if He's going to answer, why not ask, right? I mean, that's the one thing about Moses. He's like, hey, you're God. If, I'm, if, I'm, if we're talking, let's talk, right? I mean, subhanAllah, it's so beautiful if you look at the story. So he says, uh, well, I can't see you, but can something, you know? Like, so Moses, <laughs> he tells Moses to look. And this was, I believe, in Mount Sinai. To look at the mountain, and Allah reveals to him part of his sack, we call it in Arabic, part of his, his shank, uh, just to the side of the mountain. So basically what, what are we saying? Like a, a, a little sliver of the light reflecting to the mountain. And when Musa, Moses, looked upon that, he collapsed. The, 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 the power of the light the power of the light made his body just collapse. It was then after then when, you know, his, his face had changed and he had that glow and the people recognized in him that, that something was changed because his light had changed. It's such a beautiful story. It's important to understand that point of the story of the light of the soul breathed into Adam. <laughs> such a beautiful thing. So Moses has some trials and some tribulations with his people. I mean, you know, they're wandering through the desert. They don't have any water. Of course, Moses has the staff. And any time uh, things are desperately needed, Moses uh, asks Allah and Allah grants. There's clear miracles where Moses used his staff again as one of the tributes to the, to the uh, tribes. A spring for each tribe. Right? We know that the story is there, if we're going back and paying attention to the details, that the son Ishmael, from the descendant of Abraham, was blessed with what? <laughs> what? What did we tell you? God's blessing is always what? That which he has created all of living life with. <laughs> water, right? It's always water. It's a very clear sign. Water is the pure thing. So Ismail, and then the tribes all get their own water. They're asked for different things, and they got the, the mana wa salwa, or the, uh, the quail, and the uh, mm, different things that the, the Jewish people asked. And we know that uh, Moses never got to enter the promised land, and that the Jews continued to stay outside of the promised land for some time. And so one of the other important stories, and we'll close out... Um, We'll close out this section on Moses with the other story that <laughs> is often not told. All right, like I said, since this is the hotconflict.com series and I told you, I'm going to tell you the story and tell it to you in a way and use terminology and terms that are probably different to you and that you've never heard. And so there is a possibility that when you hear this, you're going to think, what in the world are we talking about? Well, since we've been talking about the existence of other races of aliens, what we would now call aliens from other planets and other dimensions here on this planet and elsewhere within our galaxies and solar systems and beyond uh, uh, throughout the whole universe, uh, we know that this all existed. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, please go back and look at some of the earlier episodes. It is at some point in his wanderings, that Moses is searching for something because he wants to understand what's really going on. And he starts to question God about certain different things. 
uh, as we said, Moses and Allah had this interesting relationship where they communicated quite often. It was a very, uh, very uh, cool kind of setup that, that our beloved prophet Moses had. So one of the times he was asking Allah about something and the way everything is working, and Allah told Moses to go see someone that we in Arabic called Khidr. Now since we're talking about the fact that there are all other kinds of races, with all other kinds of technology and ability, let's describe the story of Khidr. Well, if we describe the story of Khidr in modern day and age, as I'm describing to you with uh, Western references, Khidr is known as, in Arabic, the Green. Now, the Greens are the powerful Greens in, in uh, ufology or modern day jinn study are sometimes known to be benevolent. Now here, Allah sends Moses to go see a benevolent green. Now, one of the interesting abilities that Khidr has is he is described as having the ability to understand the biology of our planet and be able to manipulate growth anywhere he went, right? He was able to manipulate growth anywhere he went. He had some advanced knowledge. Uh, by the power of God or however way, but we know he was definitely benevolent and we know he was definitely a servant and believer of the Lord, as is clearly described in the Quran. And I'm sure if you checked uh, Jewish sources, you would find similar stories. And in, in, in Muslim stories, he's described as Khidr, both in the Quran and from some of the statements of the Prophet. We have some clear examples of him being similar to some of the other alien races in that. Either he is living for an extremely long time or possibly has a power that is beyond that that God has blessed him with where he is living indefinitely. Now, that in and alone, uh, if that made you freak out, then that's really, uh, you're not ready for the truth because the next part of the story is even more dramatic. Moses is told to go and spend time with Khidr for what? Moses is trying to figure out what's really going on on this planet, and he is introduced to Khidr, one of God's servants, possibly a benevolent green, and this benevolent green has technology, or an ability, or so somehow been blessed by Allah to have the ability to time travel, or have some kind of precognitive abilities, and of course, uh, we can go into some of the specific details. If you go through the story in the Quran, Moses is taken on a trip with this benevolent green. Well, obviously, uh, you're listening to the story, and so you know it's already weird, but you probably didn't think it was going to get this weird. So we have to go back and say again, the fundamental that we're talking about is La ilaha illallah. And if we go through the fundamentals of the faith again, we remember that there are angels and there are jinns, and there are prophets and there are books that are revealed that are correct, and you have a soul and it will be judged, and there is heaven and hell. But the last part of the article of faith that all the prophets told is that all of this is destined and known and part of the plan of Allah, and Allah is the greatest of all planners. And that if you don't recognize that God Allah, the Most High, has destined for our race, the children of Adam, to be the superior race because of our belief and worship of the Lord. But Moses is taken and taught some of the secret knowledge, or what we call uh, knowledge of the unseen world, um, from the ability of uh, some of the other races, perhaps Khidr, uh, we're not sure, they had the ability to understand time in a different method. Uh, for example, many of the scholars will explain to you uh, why people use some of the black magic, which we re refer to as people uh, in cahoots with uh, the other jinns or interdimensional beings who are misguiding them or deceiving them. But the jinns had the ability to understand time and the future differently than us because time for us is a relative to our uh, position to the sun. Now in the whole galaxy and then universe and beyond, if you spend five minutes to actually look at the map of 
what we know to be the universe in our limited knowledge and you see where we are on the map to be honest if you have a map you can't see where we are we're so small that we're not even there but if you look at the the small corner that we're in way off in in like the middle of the boonies if you actually look at the map you'll start to understand what i'm talking about but moses is taken to spend time with this benevolent and they go on certain trips the benevolent green takes moses and one of the first things that he does is moses says listen i have been sent by god because you need to show me and teach me what's really going on right and the benevolent green tries to tell moses listen with your um situation here based on what you know yes of course god is god but for you to understand what's really going on in the other dimensions while you're here on the third dimension on, on planet earth it's uh you're just not going to be able to understand what i'm talking about you're, you're just you're just not going to be able to you're just not going to be able to understand it so moses doesn't listen to him and says i'm staying with you no matter what and so the first thing that happens is the benevolent green takes Moses and uh, he breaks a boat and he like damages it. And Moses asks, asks him, why did you just damage that boat? There was nothing wrong with that boat. And so obviously the benevolent tells him, what? I told you, don't ask questions about what you don't understand. And then later on, they go to another point where they're walking in some area and there is a little boy. And the green kills the little boy. Actually kills him. Sacrifices him. Now, imagine seeing that. What looks like a young child, free from sin and, and pure, being killed by a benevolent green that God has sent you to go speak to. Uh, Moses is pretty much not sure what is going on and he's he's kind of freaking out and he's asking him like what in the world are you doing that for that cannot be right and so Khidr, the green tells him what I told you you will not be able to comprehend what is going on here Later on, they get to a town or a village, and they needed a place to stay, and they ask the people in this village uh, that there is a wall or something broken um, that needs to be fixed, and if they fixed it, could they get some provisions and stuff? And the people say no. <laughs> right? And so the green go has a, go, goes ahead and repairs the wall and keeps doing it, and Moses is somewhat disturbed at the work and the situation because he's like, why are we doing this for free? This is a waste of time. We, we need to actually have somewhere to stay. And so the story gets interesting when the benevolent reveals to Moses, the prophet of the Lord of that time. And so Moses is a little bit uncomfortable because he, thinking as a son of Adam, that he is the prophet, that he should be the most aware of what's going on in the world. And this is you know, possibly a little bit of hubris of mankind, um, our superiority to any of the other races or any other beings is only in our faith in the Lord, and we should trust in Him. And so here Moses is having a, a aha moment, as we call it in, in Western terms, where he's being taught, wait a second, you're dealing with Allah, and there are things here that are beyond your understanding. And so Khidr goes on to explain that there was, right, there was, he goes, here, let me now explain to you what you don't have the patience to understand and what you can't comprehend. This is what is going on and this is what I'm doing. There is a king coming down the river and that boat that you saw belongs to a poor fisherman. The king's coming down and he's confiscating any vehicles that look seafaring for an, impe an impeding attack. Now, if the king confiscates the fisherman's boat, 
He starves and he can't take care of his family. I smack the boat. The king's going to see it. He's going to decide to leave it. The fishermen will come, see it's broken. It'll be a messed up day, but he'll patch it up and everything will be okay. It might look like a bad day to him, but it's actually much better in the whole overall situation. So what you thought was going on wasn't really going on. But you killed a boy. Kuther <laughs> said, yes, it might have just looked like a little boy to you, but later on, that boy was going to cause some serious trouble to his parents. And his parents are good people who believe in the Lord Most High. And so it was necessary, instead of waiting for later, for me to eliminate this problem now, and this is what is the right thing to do. And he is... Chidr, who is doing what he is doing by the commandment of the Lord, Most High. But this is a mission that Moses is not understanding. So he's starting to get that there is knowledge out there, and there is technology out there, and there are people with abilities who are believers out there. But I have some pretty strange things going on. The ability to understand what's going to happen in the future or time travel. But what about the wall? Why build the wall? Well, the wall, it turned out, was not important at all. But it just so happens that underneath that wall, there is a buried treasure that belongs to two orphans. Now, the two orphans are unable to collect it. And the knowledge of that treasure is unknown, and it will only be made known at a certain time when the orphans are able to use it for good means. And the Treasure was left there by their father, who was a righteous and noble man, who believed in the Lord Most High. And so Hither, the green, benevolent, goes on to tell Moses about all these things that he doesn't understand, because he doesn't know everything. And there are other things going on. Moses learns a lesson, and it's a very important lesson. And it's something that perhaps the children of Israel, some of them, continue to know. But it's something that we have very clearly in our Qur'an. There's a lot more going on in the world around us, if you're paying attention to the details. Not only was Khidr, the green benevolent, believing in the Lord Most High, having long life, possibly living forever, the continuous power of growth, possibly being from the actual tree of life, bringing life to everything he touched, not dying, there are some strange things going on, brothers and sisters. I told you, you're going to hear parts of the story of the truth. And so Moses, peace and blessings be upon him, is given much, much knowledge and much, much status. And above all things, there can be no doubt. <laughs> Moses spoke to Allah. Moses spoke to Allah. And as a Muslim... <laughs> Moses did me one heck of a favor, brothers and sisters. A favor that I'm not even still taking advantage of to the best of my abilities. We ask Allah to forgive us. Moses did us a favor, and we'll tell you about it later on in the story. But Moses is one of the coolest of all the prophets, just because his character is so awesome if you really pay attention to the details. But Moses had some tripping times, and he got to see some crazy stuff from inside the house of Pharaoh. Reptoids and alien races and technologies working at the highest level. And then, what? Given the chance to speak to Allah and see a little bit of the light? To see a reflection off of a mountain of the light? To produce springs of water for his people and foods and quails and salwa and some of the other blessings? but also problems with his people and much trials and tribulations and never being able to lead his people into the promised land. Hard times for our, for our prophet Musa, but still always believing in the one same thing, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. It's time to take a break. <laughs>